All right, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by the upcoming Quest exclusive first person hero based shooter, Strike Rush, set for release in April of 2024. Because of this video, I spent a good couple of days playing through the closed beta test that the developers called CBT throughout the entire time, which was fun. I played 18 rounds of this multiplayer hero based shooter in VR, and it's definitely something that holds a lot of potential, basically, and at least for the game that I played, and remember, everything that I played is up for change because what I ended up playing was a closed beta test specifically to get player feedback and change the game in response to that feedback. But what I played was a hero based shooter with five different heroes. It's unknown if that's the maximum, but we had five. Each of these five all pulled from the same weapon pool because instead of starting with weapons, you're actually picking up weapons in the world. It is a 4v4 competitive match that you play against the other team attempting to capture a control point. It is effectively King of the Hill. In the spawn, there are three guns that you can pick from, the shotgun, the energy rifle, and the assault rifle. However, hidden throughout all the different maps, you have many other weapons such as pistols, sniper rifles, and heavy machine guns, and you are tasked with trying to eliminate the other team and keep the point captured for as long as possible. The King of the Hill game mode plays very similarly to Team Fortress 2 in that you have a timer that is counting down and you play the best of three. Now, the reason why there are different heroes is because although the heroes are all pulling from the same weapon pool, they each have their own unique abilities. These abilities are akin to Overwatch abilities, although each of these heroes have a loadout of abilities, meaning that even though you're playing that character, their ability can actually be swapped opt out for other abilities before the match starts. So that differentiates the heroes. So you have a healing class, you have a tank class, you have a defense class, etc. Each of the characters also have a robotic pet. And that robot pet is AI controlled and follows the player throughout the match. However, you can direct the pet to different points on the map, at least within a radius around the player, and can effectively target different enemies, different enemy pets, and different enemy buildings as one of the heroes has the ability to build sentry guns. And that kind of adds a small tactical element due to this AI controlled pet not only having their own abilities that activate either passively or at the same time as the player controlled abilities, but they can also target specific entities on the map. On top of all of that, you also have the mech timer. Based on the performance of your team, you are building up a timer that once reached spawns a mech. It is an empty mech suit that anybody on that team can walk up and utilize. Controlling the mech is very different from playing any of the other characters. You feel much larger in scale. You are far, far more powerful. And when you spawn into the map, you are more than likely going to be the main focus of the enemy team. All of this combined is the basics of this game, Strike Rush, that I played 18 rounds for and gave a lot of my feedback to the developers. That was the whole point. They are effectively paying me to play this game, give a lot of my feedback after playing it for hours, and then telling you about it. It's pretty good. It's obviously needing some polish. This game is very much in beta, even on the Quest 3, which by the way, the developers did provide for the best possible footage. Thanks guys. Even on the Quest 3, it was still maxed out to 72 FPS, probably for feature parity for this beta test. However, things like texture sizes and draw distances do definitely need some work, as well as the map sizes for some of these games definitely not lending themselves well to a 4v4 match. Some of the maps are perfect, such as the downtown South Korean city style map, the West Western American map, and also the basic map that we played most of all. However, there was also this arena map that was huge and pretty much turned into a sniper battle because the sniper rifles are incredibly powerful. For a couple of rounds, I just kind of camped in a corner and knocked out all the, all the other opponents very quickly using the sniper rifle. Because it's a VR first person shooter, because it's a competitive VR first person shooter, obviously taking inspirations from other popular hero based shooters, it is kind of an interesting experience. The game is set to release in April. There is a roadmap of future development. They are planning on having way more heroes, way more maps, changes to weapons, new weapons, and also mini games, which in the lobby that you spawn in before going into a match has this separate living room area with a games console and a TV, but in the beta it didn't work. I'm guessing there's something there. It's pretty good. It needs some polish, but they did this massive test where they paid players to play their game and then took all of their feedback and it seemed to go pretty well. 
So I wish them all the best, and thank you so much to Strike Rush for sponsoring the channel and supplying me with some good VR hardware that is going to allow me to make a couple of projects that I've always wanted to make. And yeah, if you're at all interested in Strike Rush, links to all the information related to the game down in the description below. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and I will see you all next time. I'm Tyler McVick of The Passionate Gamer. I'll talk to you all later. Adios.